Okay, we are recording now, and this one is about the Pinter. If you... Oh, I should introduce myself, of course. My name's Steve Jaguer. This is a Beer Native kind of commentary slash review. Let's get going. I just sort of dove straight in there. Like, I'm just, so, I'm just so crazy in the head right now that I thought, ah, I didn't really just wait for things to play out. Yeah, do subscribe to the channel. Uh, follow me on Untapped. That's fun. I'm getting more people uh, friending me on Untapped, and it's really cool because I'm learning about a lot of new beers. So big fan of that. So do that. Uh, otherwise, let's get rid of that thing and let's get to it. The Pinter. If you go back to, let's see, when was it I did the review of the Pinter? Let's take a quick look at that, actually. It was July 10th I did that review. Let's take a look. There it is. The Greater Good Pinter Review Homebrew for Dummies? I don't know. I wasn't sure, right? And if you want to see how it works, I go into a lot of detail. It's 20 minutes long. I start from the very beginning of open the, opening the box up to see what it looks like to the very end where I pull the pint. So it's over the course of two weeks. It's pretty cool, I think. Um, enough people have liked it. It's got over a thousand views. Uh, first comment says, great review. I'm going to order mine now. Awesome. I always think that's a good review. Uh, so not too bad. A little bit of time passes and I decide that I'm going to try it again. I, you get two packs, two brews when you buy the pinter, or at least you did then. And I had the seasonal uh, session ale, which was good. I gave it a pretty good review. And I also had the space hopper, which is the double IPA. And I did a review of that recently. And I'll, I'll put the links as I'm talking up here. You probably already noticed that. Uh, and so the space hopper was a real disappointment, but I think it was my fault, to be perfectly honest. It I, I was past the due date, and I don't know if it was the fact that all the hops had faded. I think the real problem was the yeast comes in a little bottle, and if you don't treat it right, obviously yeast dies. It doesn't ferment, and I, it, it just seemed like a like a weak 2% lager when it was done. It wasn't hoppy. It was just dead to the water. Um, I dumped most of it, so that was that. But I, I gave it that review, and I, I thought it was unfair. Uh, but anyway, I was going to order something else. And this is when things got a little weird because I started to learn more about the Pinter 2. And I'm thinking, okay, how different is this thing? Then it did seem like they'd fixed a lot of the problems that I found in the Pinter 1. So I was kind of curious, but I didn't want to pay the, what seemed like an exorbitant amount of money to buy the 2. Now the 1, I think I got it for 70 pounds and I got, well, 20 pints of beer with that. So now I'm like, all right, well, 70 pounds, 20 pints of beer. I'm getting, I'm buying beer. And I get a free mechanism to make it, almost. And it was the first one, right? So let's say I was one of the guinea pigs, an early adopter of it. And I thought it was working out really well. Pretty excited that the Pinter 2 came along. I didn't want to spend 150 pounds when I already had one, right? Was there an upgrade program or proof that I had one so that I could trade it in and get a new one? Something that would incentivize me to proceed and continue with the Pinter 2. And as far as I could see, there wasn't anything. I did, and that's not true, I did notice pretty early on when it came out, I got a 20 pound off coupon for it, but it still made it very expensive when I hadn't tried it yet. I hadn't even seen it, so I'm sight unseen being asked to buy the second brew thing, which I didn't need because I didn't know if how different it was. Why would I do that? As you can imagine, I didn't. So anyway, I went to buy another, um, another test. And I thought, okay, I will, this time, I'll buy the other double IPA. I went to their website. Let's take another look there. Uh, actually, I did it on my phone. So I'm going to show you that too. Let's go. There it is. And it said, Beer of the Month, the Big Dippa. And I thought, oh, that's pretty cool. Another double IPA, 7%, different hop variety. I thought, this is really close to the other one. Great. Roll down, look at some of the stuff about it. Space Hopper's Big Sister, yeah, a mention of the one I'd already tried, right? Galactic Tropical, let's give them another go. Five days, three days, ten pints, it all, it looks almost identical. Add to my bag, brilliant. Then it talks about developing my beer, if I want to do it even more, it tries to get me to sign up, I'm like, all right, whatever, whatever, no big deal. Um, I'm going to buy this. All right, and I'll show you, I, I loaded it up on my phone. Because I, I don't buy, I hardly ever buy things, right? And you get the same kind of general atmosphere, right? You get the pinter there, you scroll up, and and right away you've got the uh, 
add to your bag right there. So I did. And it keeps saying add it, add it. As soon as you're satisfied, I'm like, okay, yeah. I'm developing my beer. And then it tries to ask for my soul. I'm like, yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever. Add to the, add. Done. That's what I did. Well, there's a really important thing that if you don't have a pint or two, you don't know about these this, these new beers. And it's subtle. And I don't know if you're watching this video, if you've seen it yet, um, that will be the kind of crux. I gotta find my pointer. It's this thing here, pint or two exclusive. Now, what does that mean? I don't know. I don't know what it means. They announced the pint or two. Maybe it's in celebration of the pint or two's release. It's not clear to me at all what it means. And it continues to not be clear. So I added to bag and I bought one. Well, let me explain what that means, because now I know what it means. And it kind of sucks a little bit. So here's the pack. You can see it on the uh, main screen. Looks just like the old ones. You open it up. You get the thing full of wart. And you get your little things. Like if you watch my previous video, you get some, what is that? The purifier. Clean everything up with that. You get the yeast. Sexier bottle for the yeast. But then wrapped in the middle, and you'll see it if I do this, the what the F is this right there in the middle? You get this guy. And you can see it actually. And this, this well, let, let's give it credit. This is pretty cool. This is hop oil. E1520. I don't know what that means, but that that's a little. And gotta gotta be honest, you know, opening it up. I wish I could do this. It smells like apples. Really, really nice. And I'm like, what the heck do I do with that? I was going through the procedure. Well, first of all, where I, I got caught off guard was the app that kind of gives you instructions on how to do things and helps you with timing. When I said I had a pinter one, I was going to new brew and I went to choose Big Dippa, it said, no, it wouldn't let me pick it. It said, it's a pinter two, you can't choose it. I'm like, all right, whatever. So I lied and said I had a pinter two and let me pick it and it let me schedule it. No different. I didn't get it. And then I looked at it, I looked at the instructions on how the Pinter 2 brews versus the Pinter 1. There's a whole bunch more instructions. Uh, there's more gadgetry on the Pinter 2, clearly. I hadn't looked at that. And then I saw that hop thing. And let me go back here. Hold on. <coughs> Pardon me. Had I scrolled down far enough? So we got all this. We got developing my beer. We got the fresh beer guide. And then, whoa, there, there it is. Introducing the hopper. Oh, a world first. I See, who reads this far? Why is the instructions I already knew are there? The soliciting my email, what's that doing before it tells me the thing I really needed to know about why it was a pint or two exclusive? There's this little thingy on the bottom. And it is this weird hopper feature that you can, I guess, freshly hop. It's like a late hop kind of method, almost like fake late hop. And I guess I, I did, it wasn't clear from the instructions when you do it, but I, it looks like just near the end of the fermentation process. So the end of the five to seven days, you screw that little bad boy in and some fresh hop oil goes in. So you're kind of like late hopping, you know, that's why, maybe that's why the space hopper wasn't very good. They have this new mechanism that really, and I can still smell it having opened the very nice. Ah, so this among other things like the, you know, the, the dial for carbonation being more advanced. Um, that is a, that is part of the Piner too. And I didn't know that. I'm, why would, why would I, if I was a new customer investing it, investigating it for the first time with no bias of the Piner one, I would have noticed, I would have, I would have probably read everything about it, seen the advertisement and, and got it. And if anything would have bought maybe the space hopper and not got the oil and thought what a ripoff. Why am I paying the same price for that? So that is what's kind of screwed me over. I have this, I have this recipe that I bought not knowing, like, yeah, I can use it in the pinter one, but I don't get the, the oil. I, I suffer and I don't get the quality of whatever it is they were trying to do. Or I try and find a way to use the oil. I just was really ticked off a, well, probably more ticked off than I should have been because when I wrote to them, um, 
there's another reason. I was ticked off because there's it's just not clear what Pinter 2 exclusive really means if you own a Pinter 1. It isn't. They, you can buy it. In fact, you can impulse buy it so easily because this add to bag is the biggest button on your phone. And if you're just thinking, well, I'm just gonna I'm just buying another flavor, it's already a thing you do. And you could get it wrong and you can be disappointed when it arrives, just like me. All right. Why else is it controversial and why else am I annoyed? Well, after I thought that was a pretty successful, pretty successful review, and I figure like, well. They they have they occasionally have these things like refer a friend and get twenty pound off and whatever right I think oh well look at this I mean I referred more than a friend I got all sorts of people here buying pinters off the back of my review I'll take a punt and I will ask if I can get a discount and you can see me quoting the review saying this has been pretty popular um, I'd like to review the piner too maybe you can give me a discount on the piner too right pretty pretty cool what did I get back thanks for getting in touch apologies for the delay. It's wonderful you've been supportive, but unfortunately at the moment, there are no discounts or offers for Pinter 2. Um, keep an eye out on So I'd Basically, you're just a regular punter. Um, here's nothing. Thanks for thanks for the, the all the work you did promoting our, our Pinter 1, but PFO, right? You're, we're not going to give you anything. So I'm like, you can get discounts. You can get £10 off just by subscribing to their newsletter. And they couldn't even throw me that bone and say like, or they couldn't act as my friend and say, well, we have a friend bonus. I'll act as your refer. Here's 20 pound off. Maybe you get 30 pound off. Or maybe just acknowledge the fact that they, you know, I, I did a good thing for them early on. And, uh, you know, maybe they think I'm not having a go with them or something. That just really disappointed me from a new company and a customer service perspective that that was how they handled that. You know, do they get a ton of requests like this? I mean, maybe. I only saw about five reviews eventually. Mine was one of the first of the Pinter up there. So I don't know how many people they could get doing stuff like this. But so there, there, now you go. Now they got this on a review. Nice going, guys. So here's where we are now. I bought this and I made it today. Now you're probably thinking, all right, so if you don't have a Pinter 2, you don't have a little hopper device, but you do clearly in my hand, I have an empty oil bottle. What did I do with it? I put it in anyway, but I didn't get a chance to late hop it. It just smelled and tastes so good. Uh, I I mixed it in the big shaky shake. And just before, after I'd mixed it, the living crap out of it, and just before I'd flipped it so that it, you know, it was sitting on top of the fermenter device, and you have to watch the original one to know what I'm talking about. Uh, let me get this back onto here, actually. To know what I'm talking about, you you, you shake it in the device, and actually I can even show you what it looks like here. Let's say it's this thing, right? You pack everything into this thing, you shake it all up, and it sits kind of on its face and ferments for a while. I don't know if there's a photo of it here. Oh, this doesn't even tell me. I pour it in. Okay, this is get the instructions. There we go. Leave it to ferment. See how it's upside down there? Uh, oh, I'm not even showing you the screen. Duh. There we go. See how it's upside down there? Well, that's a little attachment that goes on there called the fermenter. It's like a steel chamber that that kind of does all the fermenting. The reason really I think it's there is because when you disconnect it, there's a valve that means all the yeast and sediment goes away and you can pour directly out of the thing you made it in, which is actually a pretty good invention, right? Give them credit for that for sure. So I put the hop oil in there. After I'd shaken it and it was ready to go, and I was going to attach and twist, and then it all kind of piles into that chamber. I had added the hop oil into the bottom of there, so after post mix, it would go into the, go, it would go into it somehow. I know that's not ideal. It's not a late hop, but there's no way for me to late hop without blowing all the carbonation out, and opening the whole thing up, right? And that would completely ruin the beer. And I, yet I wanted to use it, so that's what I did. So what's going to happen now is there's going to be another review to follow up on this to tell you if it was any good, you know, did I waste my 19 pounds because they're just not being clear about about what Pinter 2 means and Pinter 1. It does feel like the Pinter 1 people who supported them early on are like second class citizens now. They don't even talk about the Pinter 1 like it even existed. They're pushing all the beers with the little hop thing on it 
And when you mentioned that you were a Pinter 1 supporter, they just go, yeah, it's fine. Go away. Pay full price for the Pinter 2. You don't exist to us anymore. You're dead to us. So that's, that's, what, that's my controversy. That's what ticked me off. I think it's a very cool device. I think the second one's probably way better. I love this hopper thing. It all seems cool. I just cannot justify the price and I cannot justify the service given people like me and people like the other people who reviewed it were early adopters in on this. And now we're just being forced to buy the whole thing again and just throw away the one we spent 70, 80 pounds on not even a year ago. That's bullshit. So there you go. That's what this video is about. A little bit of a whinge, you know, um, but in two weeks time, We'll see if it completely is awesome anyway. You know, maybe I found a way to buy the exclusive ones and they actually turn out okay. And if I do, you know what? Regardless, I'll be back in two weeks and I will tell you if the Big Dipper brew to the Pinter 1, even though it's a Pinter 2 exclusive, turns out to be any good. Thank you for watching and thank you for listening. That is the end of my giant whinge fest for today. No beer consumed, but stay tuned. I got one coming up for you, um, probably going to be released at the same time as this. So check it out. My name is Steve Jaguar. This is Beer Native Beer Reviews. Thank you for tolerating me.